A chance encounter with a tasty local ingredient or two can kick off a delicious meal and a romp down the pathway of life. Do you see some berries? That's where all the mussels are growing. Let me share a secret recipe. Discover an ingredient that fires your imagination. Choose other flavors to match. Find the best way to cook them. My secret recipe? Cooking without a recipe. Gabe and I had an adventuresome hike today. We spotted some prime local ingredients and discovered inspiration for dinner tonight. Something you can do close to home too, because local ingredients are always inspiring. You know, whether you live in the city or the country, we all have inspiration close by. For me, with Prince Edward Island in my backyard and the ocean at my doorstep, potatoes and mussels are regulars at my table. But even with that local pedigree, I like to steam mussels off as soon as possible when they hit my kitchen. And for that, I'll need three simple things. A great big pot, a liquid, and something aromatic. Mustard, Canada's only native spice. And even though this is in a fancy French jar, the seeds that made the mustard were actually grown right here at home, shipped across the ocean, turned into aromatic mustard, and shipped right back home. Now for a liquid. Let's see. Now you can use just about any liquid you have to steam off mussels. Orange juice, local apple cider, but I'm really in a flag-waving mood today. So how about some crisp Niagara Riesling? Now mussels are loaded with all kinds of natural juiciness. It really doesn't take a whole lot of liquid to get them steaming and releasing that juice, making their own broth basically. So really what I'm doing now is flavoring their natural broth, adding some accent flavors to it. Now the standard rules of aromatic engagement apply. Onions work here too. And a little bit of garlic wouldn't be a bad idea either. Sometimes I think I actually like the muscle broth more than the muscle meat. It's got so much flavor, the broth. It just tastes like a great day at the beach. The thinner I slice the garlic, the easier it is for it to spread all its flavor around. So with a tight-fitting lid and a bit of heat, I'll have a tasty broth in no time. Now what about the rest of dinner? Well, since I'm on the local road today, how about some potatoes? We seem to have a lot of these kicking around Prince Edward Island. Good old baking potatoes. I think I'll bake some off, and then when they're done baking, maybe I'll stuff them with some more native flavors. Now sometimes these are called Idaho potatoes, but they're actually quite local. They're perfect for baking because they have a nice firm flesh that stands up well in the oven. They'll be perfect for stuffing too. Now all this talk about local flavors well, it's got me craving some local flavors right now. Here's something else we grow a lot of on Prince Edward Island, blueberries. And I like to enjoy these in a smoothie almost every single day.
Now here's a local ingredient that always goes with blueberries. Maple syrup. Just a splash. And how about some of my local apple cider? Never actually tried this combination before. I bet it works though. Hey, that's really good. I quite like that. It tastes local and it tastes amazing. This would make a great summer cooler. Good for kids too. It's colorful, it's tasty, and it's healthy with all those blueberries in there. Now, let's see what other local stuff I have kicking around here. They swim right in that hole. This boat is a broken one. You ready to climb down the ladder? Yeah. Gabe and I went hiking today and found lots of tasty inspiration for supper. You know, local flavors can be one of your best sources of kitchen inspiration too. Whether they're in your garden, at a neighborhood farm stand, or even in the local supermarket. Now some of these Prince Edward Island mussels from down the coast have just come out of a comfortable steam bath with a glass of Niagara Riesling and some aromatic mustard. I love mussels and today my restaurant roots are starting to show a little bit because I'm taking the time to separate these mussels into three basic parts. I've got the plump perfectly steamed meat here, I've got the shells which are actually loaded with calcium, they're great for your soil, and I've got the flavorful broth and it's the broth that has inspired me to separate these mussels because now I can add flavors to it, I can bring it to a simmer and I can do all of those things without overcooking the meat. And one thing's for sure, I'm going to need something to dip into that broth. Something like some good hearty bread. Now I got this bread at my local farmers market which is a great place for you and your family to learn about the ingredients in your backyard. Your local farmers market is the best place you can go to feel the rhythms of the season and to learn about the bounty in your backyard. I've been coming here for years. I treasure the friends I've made and the personality they add to my family's food. It's not just chicken, it's Paul's all-natural free-range chicken. Hey Paul. Hey, you like it? Looking good. And lots of aromatic fresh herbs. Jim's fresh herbs. Hey man. How you doing? Good to see you. And Ed's beautiful vegetables grown in rich local earth. Hello, Michael. And just about everything's organic, even Jude's dog treats. This is a great place for kids to make the sort of food connections that really matter. Bring them along. Help them learn to embrace and respect the effort that goes into the ingredients on their plate. Where else do you get to meet the folks who get up early in the morning and get their hands dirty for you? Local farmers are the real heroes of the food world. Get to know them. They'll share more than just their food with you. But perhaps what I love best about the market is that here, quite simply, I get to say thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, I could simply take these bread slices and dip them right into that broth, but I happen to know from long experience that if I dry this bread out, it will absorb even more of that muscly goodness. I'm going to toast it. Let's see, now to encourage it to toast, to caramelize it a bit, here comes the olive oil. Now here's a way to make that bread a little bit savory, add some salt and pepper to it. Now to toast these off, I'm going to use my pizza stone. Now this stays in my oven all the time and it's perfect for toasting because it absorbs all the heat of the oven and it slowly radiates it back. 
Pizza stones are really easy to take care of. All you have to do is let it cool down after you're done using it, wipe off any food debris, and then rinse it under lots of water. But don't use any soap, because the stone will actually absorb the flavors of the soap, and you definitely don't want your toast ending up tasting like soap. Now over time, it will develop a beautiful natural patina. It will darken, and that means it's getting lots of tender, loving care. It's time to take care of these potatoes. When I was a kid, I always knew when company was coming for dinner because my mom would start to stuff potatoes. Now, I don't know about you, but when I'm stuffing potatoes, the first thing I go looking for is some cheese. How about some oka from Quebec? Oka's a creamy cheese. It'll melt perfectly into these potatoes. And I think I'll add some herbs to those as well. Simple is best. Some flavors go together naturally, like simple flat leaf parsley with just about any other ingredient. I love its fresh, green, herbaceous flavor. Great ingredients are the key to great stuffed potatoes. Now because those potatoes cooled off for a few minutes, they're not so hot that they start melting the cheese right now, which actually makes it a little bit easier to mix together. What comes out must go back. And of course, since I've added quite a bit of bulk to the potatoes, it's easy to have them overflow a little bit. Local potatoes, local bread, local mussels. How about some local fruit? One of the best places to find inspiration in your kitchen is actually in your backyard because local ingredients are always fresh and flavorful. Gabe and I were banging around the neighborhood today and found all kinds of fun fresh flavors. Well that inspired me to rev up my kitchen with all things local. So I steamed off Prince Edward Island mussels with Niagara Riesling and native mustard. And backyard potatoes are in the oven getting to know some come from away Oka cheese. You know, one of the best places to find local flavors in your kitchen is in your salad bowl. Because a great salad has three simple parts. Great greens, a great garnish, and great dressing. And each one of those parts is easy to experiment with. I mean the dressing for instance. All you really need there is something sour, something sweet, and some oil. So let's see what I have that's local and sour. Well balsamic vinegar is definitely not on that list, but apple cider vinegar is. Okay, now something sweet. Maple syrup. Actually I don't really think maple syrup goes well with the flavor of apple, but honey will. And for some local oil, that's easy, canola oil. To make a simple salad dressing, begin with a splash of something sour, then a splash of something sweet, and then two splashes of some oil. Mustard actually helps oil and vinegar emulsify. That means it helps them blend together into a nice smooth dressing. Now for some local greens. Perfect. Arugula, some pea shoots, baby spinach. Oh, this looks good. Some watercress. I'm going to kind of improvise my own little salad mix here. Big handful of baby spinach. And some watercress. I love this stuff. It has this beautiful peppery flavor. And arugula. It's really good stuff. It's got this sharp, peppery, nutty flavor to it. And some pea shoots. I've got my dressing, I've got my greens, and there's my garnish right there. Some of that bread that's left over. I'll just make some quick croutons. 
This bread just happens to be covered with seeds, which reminds me, I've got some pumpkin seeds too. Now that's what I call a local salad. And not just because it's sitting here in the kitchen with me. It's good to go, and I still have time to make a dessert, which means that my all-time favorite fruit, a local apple, is about to get the royal treatment. Last night I made a batch of simple pastry dough. It's bulletproof and it works for just about anything. Quiches, pies, or rustic tarts. For an easy to make, easy to use dough, combine one quarter cup of sugar and one stick of cold cubed butter in your food processor until the sugar seems to disappear. Then add one and a half level cups of all purpose flour and a pinch of salt. Pulse the mixture until it resembles coarse meal. Toss in one egg and again pulse the mixture, but just until the egg disappears. Gather the crumbly mixture with your hands and press it together into a ball. Then knead it a few times until it forms cohesive dough. Bon Appetit! Now this dough is incredibly easy to work with, especially if you give it a little flour shower. Flour the work surface, flour the dough itself, the rolling pin, and even your hands. And that way, it's guaranteed not to stick to anything. Now let's start rolling. Now here's a rolling tip for you. Instead of rolling right over the edge, I roll to the edge, just like that. That way you don't get any tears and you get a nice even circle. Here's how I gather it up. And before I add the fruit to it, it's a good idea to get it right onto the baking pan, just like this. Now for the apples. I've actually got quite a selection of local apples today. I've got some Cortlands, some Max, and some Pink Ladies. Perfect for a rustic tart. I'm gonna cut these into some pieces. Okay. I'll add some sugar to this. Now I'm using a coarse sugar today, but any sugar would work just fine. This cinnamon is actually from Vietnam. And that's one of the reasons I love spices so much. I can go traveling without leaving my kitchen. Okay, the idea is to get a nice tight pile in the center of the pastry. Now that's ready to bake. I've preheated the oven to 375 degrees. And you'll know the tart is done when the apples shrink down, they start bubbling a little bit, and the pastry browns. So it's almost time for dinner, which means I better start reheating this muscle broth and find something else to stir in there. You're a good dancer, aren't you? <laughs> I've been on a journey of exploration today in my own backyard. This salad was inspired by a trip to the local farmer's market. It's full of all kinds of tasty ingredients. I also stuffed some potatoes with a beautiful native cheese and I stuffed a simple pastry dough with some local apples. And now I have a beautiful broth that tastes like the ocean outside, gently reheating. This is the perfect time to add the mussel meat back to the broth. Because really, all I want to do is just warm that meat through. I don't want to overcook it. This is also a good time to add some green flavor. Some baby spinach. There we go. The spinach will wilt down in a heartbeat and add lots of flavor to this dish. As soon as the spinach wilts down, hey, it's good to go. Pull some of this up. That's looking good. And 
And of course, that broth needs something to dip into it. So I've got some nice crisp dippers here that I made out of some bread from the farmer's market. Looking good. I want to see how that broth turned out. Mmm, not bad. Riesling and mustard. I'm going to remember that one. You know, you can go for an inspirational hike in your world, too. Try visiting your local farmer's market or jump the fence of your neighbor's garden. Because when you look for inspiration, ideas are sure to follow in life and the kitchen. Daddy stuffed some potatoes. You don't see those a lot at home. Can I have another muscle? <gasps> are you eating my muscles? Okay, don't eat this muscle. Don't let him take a break. Dead. Okay, thank you. Mm. Can you come serve up the salad? No, Gabe can't do that, can he? You can do it. And you pick it up and you put it on our plates. Thank you oh, very much. Some toast in there. You oh, thank you. Toast in there. This pie tastes like a shortbread cookie. Well, it's not going to win any presentation awards <laughs> now. It's still going to taste good, though.